All right, so today, graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Now, we've already discussed how to graph a linear inequality in one variable. In chapter one, that was the x less than or greater than, right? So uh, what were the options when you graphed a linear inequality in one variable? Okay, so we could have ands, or we could have ors if we put two on the same number line, right? So with what we talked about before, here, give me one second, I'll run through it so that way you guys actually know what's going on. So if I gave you something simple like do I want this to work out? Sure. Okay. So if I gave you that, how would you solve this? Okay, so you get three X, do so I have to flip the inequality sign? No, because I'm not multiplying or dividing by a negative, right? And what's twenty minus five? Okay, and then how do I finish it? So X is less than or equal to and then how would you graph it? Okay, so I have to put five in the middle, right? And then is it an open circle or closed circle? Because, right, so closed circle. And then which way do I shade? Where is X less than, to the left or to the right? To the left. So when we graph these in two variables, right, this is a one-dimensional object, right? A number line is a 1D. We're going up to 2D, so we're going to be on a regular Cartesian coordinate plane. So two dimensions means that we have two variables. We'll have the X variable and the Y variable. So all of your graphs now, instead of it being a point, it's going to be a line. So we're going to be graphing these like Y equals MX plus B, okay? So if it's a filled circle, it's going to become a solid line. If it's an empty circle, we're going to represent that as a dashed line, okay? So solid lines means that you can exist on the line, okay? That means that any point on the line is a solution. Dashed lines mean that we cannot exist on the line. It is not part of the shaded region or part of the solution set. Okay, so as we get into that, it should make more sense. But everybody remember all this from chapter one, right? The 1D. So when we go up to 2D, hopefully it's not too bad. All right, so first things first. How do you identify if a point is a solution to an uh, equation? So what does it mean to be a solution? Okay, so I've got an X and a Y coordinate, right? If I plug in the X and the Y coordinate, if it is a solution, then it must satisfy the inequality. Everybody okay with that? Yes, no, maybe? So that's all I'm going to do here is this is just a substitution. All right, so take your X value from here and your Y value and plug them in. So I'm going to take my equation, substitute in my X value, substitute in my Y value, and I want to know if this is true or false. Okay, so I'm putting a question mark just because that's what I'm actually asking. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Everybody good with that? All right, so what's three times two here? Six, two times zero? Zero. And then what's six plus zero on the left? No, it's a question mark. Oh yeah, no, that's greater than or equal to. So this is the check. Is 6 greater than or equal to 6? Yeah, it's not greater than, but it's what? Equal to. So we're going to put a check mark, and is the following point a solution to the inequality? Okay. So you plug in the X and the Y, and then you just check. Is it creating a true statement? or a false statement. If the statement is true, then yes, the point is a solution. If the statement is false, then no, the, the point is not a solution. So we're going to just check these one at a time. Everybody okay with that? Yes, no, maybe? If a point is a solution, that means that it's inside the shaded region when we actually graph these. So those of you that remember how to graph linear inequalities, you should remember that we either shade above or below. So a solution is going to be any point that's inside that shaded region, okay? So real quick for us here, again, just plug it in. Yeah, it's greater because it says greater than or equal to, right? That's how the sign is read. So if it's bigger than 6 or if it's equal to 6, it's a solution. Yes, which is why we use the or term. All right, so what's 3 times 3? 2 times negative 1. What's 9 minus 2? 
Okay, is seven greater than or equal to six? Okay, so check, this works. Yes, the point is a solution. All right, so any questions on how to verify if a point is a solution? All right, you, quite frankly, just plug it in and check to see if it's a true statement or a false statement. All right, so if I asked you to graph this, first of all, how many variables do you see? One. Okay, which variable do you see? Okay, so who remembers what kind of a line has just the Y? It's the horizontal line, right? So, we know that this is going to be a horizontal line, and if I were to work everything out, I have an M of zero, I have a B of negative three, right? So I'm going to have a line that passes through negative three on my Y axis with no slope, so that's a horizontal line. Now, before I make my line, I need to figure out what's going on here. So if I do it by hand, I've got a negative 3, no change in slope, so those are the points on my line. So let me get my ruler. Come on, maybe. Ruler. Bueller. All right. So now, what kind of a line am I going to graph here? Is it going to be a solid line or a dashed line? And why? It's going to be solid because or equal to. So remember how in one dimension or equal to means a filled in circle? What that translates to in two dimension is a solid line. Okay, so if it's less than or greater than, it'll be a dashed line. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, it will be a solid line. So I'm going to graph this as a solid line. Okay, am I done? No, what's left? I have to shade. Okay, just like when we did them with one dimension, we had to shade to the left or the right. Here, I'm going to shade whatever the inequality is saying. Okay, so the inequality says, I want where y is greater than or equal to negative 3. So I'm at negative 3. Where is y bigger? Are the y's bigger above the line or below the line? Above. So I'm going to shade in this region. Yeah, what I would recommend is if we're eventually going to get to where we're shading more than one equation at a time, if you're going to use a pen, I would not recommend you use, like, you actually shade it. Um, if you use a pen, uh, well, it depends. We tend to use horizontal lines. Whoops. We tend to use horizontal lines and then um, for the first line and then vertical lines for the second or vice versa. So for me, because the line is a horizontal line, I'm using um, vertical lines, so I get a crosshatch. Okay, this is what I would prefer to see and not just shaded. Um, for this section, it's not going to matter too much, but when we get into Chapter 3, it's going to matter a lot. Because if you just scribble, it's going to get gross in a hurry. Okay, everybody remember how to graph like this? Right, so remember, it's an inequality. Whenever you see a less than or greater than sign, you are going to be shading, whether that's a one-dimensional shade or a two-dimensional shade. All right, so if I gave you this, how would you graph this? If I just said graph this function. Okay, when it comes to graphing linear inequalities, the easiest way to graph them is in y equals mx plus b form because when i is, sorry, because when y is isolated, it's really easy to tell which way to shade. Okay, if it's y greater than, you shade above. If it's y less than, you shade below. Okay, so for this one, the issue is that the sign on y is a negative, which means that that inequality sign has to flip over. So if you graphed it the way it looks, you're going to shade below when you should really be shading above. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, even though these get you the right values, I'm not going to use the cover-up method when it comes to linear inequalities. All right, instead, I'm going to get y by itself. So subtract the 5x, and then divide by negative 2. Again, this is what Jason was talking about. When you divide by a negative, what do you do with the inequality sign? Flip it so it goes from less than to greater than. 
and this will get you a positive 2 plus 5x over 2, and this is what we're actually going to graph. Everybody right with that? Yes, no, maybe? So when it comes to inequalities, isolate y. It always makes life easier. Okay? So what's my um, m up here? 5 over 2. m is always the number attached to x. So whenever I ask you to find m, just look for the x and tell me what the coefficient is. Yes, sir. Yeah, if you want to write it as y greater than or equal to 5x over 2 plus 2, you can. The important thing is that you have to be careful of the signs. So whatever sign is in front of that term has to stay with it. Okay? So just, if you're going to do that, be very careful. Positive. Right. Both of these are positive, so it makes no difference. So everybody okay with getting to that point? All right. So now, how do I graph this? Where do I start? I'll get two on the y-axis, and then how do I move? One, two, three, four, five, up. Two to the right, because it's a positive slope. Grab your ruler. And if you look, where is it pretty much close? Where is it crossing at? 0.8, which was that negative four-fifths. Okay, so you can still get those values, all right? But again, the issue is going to be how do you know which way to shade it, Okay. So, now that I have y isolated, I want where y is what? What does my sign say? Where y is greater than. So, if you take a look, this is my line, right? Where are the bigger y's? Are the bigger y's above the line or below the line? Above. So, where do I shade? Above. So, everybody okay with how to shade? And how to set these up? Yes, no, maybe? No, 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 no. You always want to graph linear inequalities out of y equals mx plus b. Okay, it's a lot easier to check which way to shade with that. The other way to do it is to make your line, which we could have done, right? And then you have to check, or you have to take a uh, test value. So we tend to use 0, 0. Plug it in and check and see if it's a solution to the equation. If it is a solution to the equation, then you shade the region containing that point. And if it's not a solution to the equation, then you shade the opposite region. Yeah. So that's how you normally do it. If you isolate y, you don't have to test at all. You can just go, is it greater than or less than? If it's greater than, you shade up. If it's less than, you shade down. So to me, that's a lot more simplistic. But again, there's always more than one way of doing these. So if you remember doing it with the test value, go ahead and use the test value. Okay. Absolute value functions. The reason why I'm showing you this now is because it doesn't matter whether we're doing parabolas or we're doing cubics or quartics or trigonometric functions like we're going to do next year. The A, H, and K are always present, and it's always the same stuff, okay? A determines um, the direction the graph points. So if A is positive, your absolute value function points up. If A is negative, it points down. If A is big, the graph is skinny. If A is between 1 and 0, the graph is fat. So, H, anybody remember what H stands for? Close, actually. It's, it's like height. It's horizontal shift. But the important thing here is, what's the sign on H inside the formula? Negative. Negative. What's the sign on H outside the formula? Positive. Positive. What that means is that your H value is always going to be flipping its sign when you pull it out of the function. All right, so if we have a negative inside the function, our H is actually a positive, which means that it's going to slide up. H is horizontal shift, which is left to right movement. That's why it's H. H is horizontal. It always flips its sign. Everything else I said was exactly right. So if you have like an x minus 3 inside the absolute value function, that means that your h is positive 3, which is going to shift the graph to the right three places. Correct. Everybody all right with that? So h is connected to x, which means that it's going to be shifting on the x-axis. So if h is horizontal shift, what do you think k is? Vertical shift. What's the sign on k up here? What's the sign on K out here? So that means that K never changes its sign. If K is positive in the function, 
that means that it's a shift up. If k is negative in the function, it is a shift down. Everybody okay with that? Yes or no? All right, and if you don't remember this, you're, we're going to have plenty of time to learn it because every graphing technique we do this entire year, we're going to have a, h, and k running around. h is the x-coordinate to the vertex. k is the y-coordinate to the vertex. So it is not intercept as much as vertex location. All right, and your vertex is located at HK. Now, HK always goes in the middle. Okay, how many values do you think I want you to find here? Usually it's five. You can get away with three. The reason for that is how many points does it take to make a line? Two. What point do both sides of the absolute value function share? The vertex. So you can use your vertex as one point. I need you to find one point to the left of the vertex, one point to the right of the vertex so you can actually form the shape. Okay? So we're going to go one point bigger than the H value, one point smaller than the H value, and that should give us our V shape. Everybody okay with that, yes or no? So what that means is that your actual image, right, when you graph these, the actual graph itself is worth two points. This page is worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. These graphs are nine points apiece. If you want to skip that because you don't like the graph, then you're losing nine points every time you make that decision. The algebra is what I'm grading you on because without this, the image doesn't really matter. This is where it's precise. So this is where the majority of the points are. Actually being able to make the image, we'll work on that. Everybody good? Yes, no? Okay. So let's jump into an example. If I gave you this equation, right? Okay. So somebody tell me, what is my A value? Okay. No. You're close, though. I need the H and the K. Somebody tell me, what's my H value? Not negative 3. But, right, because remember, A has to always flip. Okay. Right, so your vertex is at 3, 4, which goes in the middle right there. What double negative? Yes. H always flips its sign. If it's negative inside the absolute value, it will become a positive when we pull it out. If it's a positive in the absolute value, it'll become a negative when we pull it out. Everybody all right with that? Yes or no? Okay, your A is negative. Is this going to point up or down? Down. Everybody good so far? Okay. So now let's plug this in. What's 4 minus 3? What's the absolute value of 1? What's 1 times negative 2? And what's negative 2 plus 4? Positive 2. Anybody have any questions on how I'm getting that? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, so let's plug in a 5. What's 5 minus 3? Absolute value of 2. 2 times negative 2? Negative 4 plus 4. Everybody good? Right, so you're okay with finding vertex, right? Vertex goes in the middle of your XY chart. I want you to go either one or two values above the H and one or two values below the H. So if I'm at three, I go four or five, right? You take this X and you plug it back into this equation. All right, so like for four, well, we'll do two, right? Plug in a two, what's two minus three? What's the absolute value of negative one? What's one times negative two? Negative two plus four? and then plug in a 1. What's 1 minus 3? What's the absolute value of negative 2? 2 times negative 2? Negative 4 plus 4. Which is what we expect because this is a V, right? Which means if your vertex is the point right at the bottom where the graph is formed, that means that the lines are going to be exactly the same to the left and to the right of the vertex. So they should be all be growing at the same rate. No, it's absolute value. It's always positive. Now, real quick, though, uh, let me rephrase that. That didn't come out right. Your Y values can be negative. If I were to keep building this, like if I plugged in a zero, right, what's zero minus three? What's the absolute value of negative three? Three times negative two. Negative six plus four. You are allowed to get negative values as a Y, 
even out of an absolute value function. Because we have a plus four out there and a negative two that is not part of the information inside the pipes. So you just trust the math, okay? There's no real set pattern here. The set pattern is above the vertex is the same as below the vertex. All right, so you can get different values because remember, we're taking the absolute value function, we're sliding it around. So it seems that we don't know where we're going to slide it to, we can slide it wherever. Okay, now is this an inequality? Is this, is this an equality or an inequality? Inequality, it's not an equal sign, right? It's a greater than, less than? So is this going to be an open circle or closed circle? Open circle, which means dashed lines, which means my absolute value function is dashed. So, yes, you have to dash the V. So put in your vertex, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do those. So here's your V. And everybody sees, I hope, that it's pointing down, which is what we expected to have happen because our A is negative. And then we're just going to dash the line. Yeah, the guy who's won a competition for drawing the most perfect circle. Yeah. Yeah, that's where Yep. All right, so everybody okay with the graphing absolute value? Okay, now, uh, what region do I want? Do I want where Y is bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger. So where is Y bigger? Outside of the function out here or inside the function here? Outside. So that means that I want everything that's outside. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Amazing. It's like one of the funniest lines from that entire movie. Everybody right with how to graph absolute value inequalities? Yes, no, maybe. So the important thing is the shading part. That's what most people have issues with, right? So there's a couple of different ways of doing these. Okay, because I know you all know how to make lines and you know how to make them solid or dashed. It's always the shading that throws people off. If this was pointing the other way, the bigger Y's would be inside. What you look at is, okay, ignore all of this garbage, okay? The only thing that I'm checking on is the y-axis. So this is the only thing I care about. I want the region where y is greater than the line, right? You're good with that part, right? Okay, where is the y bigger, above or below? So I'm looking right here, right, this part. Okay, when I get rid of this box, is the region that I shaded inside the absolute value or outside the absolute value? Outside. So the region I want is the outside. If this were pointing up and I wanted greater than and I did the same thing, I would shade that same piece, but now it would be inside the function. If it's pointing up, greater than is inside, less than is outside. If it's pointing down, that flips. Okay, so if it points up, greater than is inside the function, less than is outside. If it points down, greater than is outside the function, less than is inside the function. Are you okay with that? So any other questions on this? Yes, no? All right, so here's your homework. 